What is up, Warrior Rising family? I am Alyssa. I am the Director of Marketing and Media for Warrior Rising. And here, these segments, we have the exclusive opportunity to talk to the many voices that make Warrior Rising the absolute best premier place to be as a veteran entrepreneur. We are we have the absolute privilege of sitting down today with the 2024 Iowa Business Shower and Valor Gala winners, Rebecca and Curtis Wolfinger of Mill Spec Manufacturing. So without further ado, welcome to you both. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Alyssa, for having us on today. It was such a pleasure meeting you this week. And oh my goodness. It was fun. Yeah, it was. It was a ton of fun. It was one for the books and it's, you have to experience it. You have to go to an event to understand how incredibly powerful and empowering these places are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how so much intense synergy with everybody. It's it's so awesome. You know, remember that, um, that quick little content that we took about describe warrior rising in one word. I said family initially, and I still believe that, but synergy is like Mm -hmm. the word we've used the rest of the night for the gala. Just so yes. much energy. I said we have to do a part two, I think. So <laughs> a lot yeah, of people are like, yeah. I thought of my word after. Uh, I want to change my word. Everybody <laughs> has such good ones. There's not enough time, you know, to really use a whole paragraph of words to describe where you're Yeah, rising. it's it's so crazy. Like like there's so many ways to describe where you're rising. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's intense, it's empowering, it's motivating. Like coming back from the event, I have been nothing but energetic and just mm-hmm. motivated to just drive. It was like recharging your batteries, yeah. you know? You know like, yeah, it's like riding a high. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and some people are like, hey, you just had a you know a huge weekend. You should take a day off, chill out. It's like, no. 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm moving. Back to the grind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, so what everyone wants to know. Okay, first question. We have to get right into it. What was your initial reaction when you found out you won the grant? Mind blowing. This was such an amazing group of cohort participants. The veterans blew it away in their pitch competitions. I really didn't know who was going to win at this point because, mm-hmm. like I said, they were all amazing. Wow, it, I just <laughs> it, it, it just blew my mind because like everybody was so awesome. Yeah. you know, like. I did not expect it whatsoever. Yeah, I wish I was an investor and had millions of dollars because I would have invested in every single one of them Yeah, because I yeah. believe so much in all of their stories. But for us to be chosen too, I was just like, wow, I'm very honored to be ch- for us to be chosen out of this entire group of amazing veterans. Yeah. And I got to sit in on all the pitches, as you know, and it was an incredible experience to hear the mm-hmm. stories behind it. So I think it's cool to have these interviews because not everyone got to hear the pitches. So it was really awesome to be on both sides of that, to see you win, but also to have heard the pitch before and like, yeah, there it's solid. It was a solid pitch, <laughs> but so, yeah. So with like winning, obviously it hasn't been easy street, right? Where it wasn't just this like, oh, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. It made sense and it's been easy all the way. So can you kind of walk through with the audience um, some of the challenges you faced getting the business off the ground or any challenges you've you know encountered during this journey? Well, for mill spec manufacturing, um, we really wanted to try to stay out of debt as much as possible. So we bootstrapped it. We tried to cash flow the business from the very beginning and start very small, you know, very unorthodox way of doing business in the manufacturing industry. But I think that was a really solid decision on our end because yeah. when if you ever started a business, if you're on this trip of being an entrepreneur, it's not going to take off like that. It was really difficult for the first year of building your brand, mm-hmm. building your network and your customer base from scratch. And during that time of like not really having much income coming in, you know, we had three major appliances break. You know, we had the central mm-hmm. AC and heat. We had the dryer. We had a dishwasher. And oh. like, hey, that doesn't sound too bad. But when you're in the middle of it with two kids, it's it takes up a lot of your daily yeah. time. Yep. And um, you really have to change your lifestyle a little bit while you're going through mm-hmm. building a business from scratch. because. You know, the conveniences, like I said, the appliances, or even just going out to eat when you want to, or, you know, splurging when you're at the, the store and your kids are like, hey, mommy, daddy, can I get this toy? Unfortunately, you can't do that every single time because you're living on yeah. a budget. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, t- it takes grit. Like, yeah. when, when you're in it, you're in it. Like, you can't just think, oh, I'll just stop, you know, and everything will go right back to normal. No, you're in it. Like, you gotta think, oh man, I had this. It's literally, it's a when they say a labor of love. This mm-hmm. starting a business truly is a labor of love. You have to have the grit, like Curtis says, to get through it because it's not always going to be, you know, straight to the top. Business is like this. You're going up and down mm-hmm. through it. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So then tell us why um, American manufacturing? How, what is that link from, you know, Curtis in the service to, you know, how, where did this come from? Well, when I found, I found uh, CNC machining through my godfather. Okay. And my godfather, he was a machinist. And I, I didn't even know that I was actually, I, my grandfather was a machinist growing up. I didn't know this. All <laughs> right. And uh, my godfather would show me the stuff that he was making at work. And I saw that stuff. And the way you're able to create things from just like a slug of metal, and it's almost like art. All right. And it's just insane. And from there, I, I went into it. I had a lot of passion for it. And it was like almost a slight obsession, but <laughs> like, I just, I was able to, uh, like, like I, like I said in the pitch, all my stuff that was my biggest burden turned into a greatest asset. Mm -hmm. Like I was able to think and process all this, all this, uh, manufacturing and how to create these products. And, yeah. And then jumping into the American manufacturing side of that is connecting his service and then to this the american manufacturing industry we got into it and realized there's a huge decline in american manufacturing mm -hmm. independence in the past decade we've lost 40 percent of machine shops and a lot of stuff wow. is produced overseas yep. so being able to bridge together um you know veteran service being proud to be an american and then now that we are becoming industry leaders in the manufacturing world we're bridging that together and we're coming in very strong into the point where we have been given this wonderful platform with practical machinists to become industry thought leaders. And we are trying to encourage other machine shops in America to say, the people that are, are local to you, they are not your competition. They are your, you know, you should be collaborating, be, be with your neighbors, see how you can both grow together. Because if we want to rebuild American manufacturing, we need to start at home by supporting each other. Yep. I love that. And that was the, a big one that um, stuck out to me during your pitch, too, was the collaboration over competition. I think that's massively important in any industry, in any part of life. Everything is so there's not enough pie for everyone like there absolutely is. Um, yeah. Doesn't matter how um, congested your industry might seem or how saturated it might be. So I think that that's really important. So that kind of leads me into talking about how have you been or how do you plan to continue giving back to the community um, through your business? Uh, mill spec manufacturing has big plans. I know, Alyssa, you were there for the per the, for yeah. the pitch, but for anybody who's watching this that wasn't able to be there, uh, we have plans of three different types of workshops we are bringing to mill spec manufacturing. The first one is called Veterans to Machinists, and we will be partnering with SkillsBridge, which will allow active duty soldiers to complete their last six months of active duty contract and come to mill spec manufacturing and learn about how to run a machine, how to make parts if you want to go to have your career after the military. The next uh, workshop is going to be Machinist to Entrepreneur. And this one is geared towards people who are already a machinist working in the machine shop environment. And they're ready to take that jump to follow their dreams of being a machine shop owner. But they don't quite understand the business side of it. There's no manual that comes with jumping from machinist to entrepreneur, unfortunately. I'm thinking about writing. How do I register with the SBA? Um, how do I set up net 30 accounts? We will teach you all of that. And then the very last workshop we're having That's is awesome. called, again, Collaboration of Competition. It is a huge event where we are calling all local manufacturers in our area. Awesome. We're located in North Carolina. And we want to have a mastermind event where we're talking about industry problems, um, sharing resources, tips, and of course, building networks and relationships to benefit each other. Because once again, I'll always say, it, if we want to rebuild American manufacturing, we have to start at home by supporting each other. I love that. That is beautifully said. And I stand behind it 100%, especially with just made in the USA. When you said that part too, I was like, yes, made <laughs> yeah. in the USA. That's a sticker I like to see. <laughs> yeah, because we've been having this movement of collaboration of competition. If anybody mm -hmm. follows us on LinkedIn, I've been saying it for months. And it finally is catching fire. Actually, mm -hmm. ha was tagged in a messages and uh, post yesterday on LinkedIn of other machine shops saying, "Hey, we're going to put together a collaboration over competition mastermind meeting on Zoom." So we have the top industry leaders in the manufacturing industry coming together That's to try awesome. to start this movement and you know share resources again and everything like that. So I am so proud of us for yeah. kickstarting that because. American manufacturing is on the rise, guys. It's going to come back so strong this year. Yep. 
That is incredible. Made in USA labels. It's going to be awesome. Yes, absolutely. I just had to share that because I'm so excited. <laughs> you should be. You should be very proud. That's a very empowering place to be, to be a part of that change and have to kickstart that change for mm -hmm. people. So that's awesome. Thank so, you. of course, with Warrior Rising, um, however you found out about it, um, how has Warrior Rising helped in this journey or how, what is, what is your experience with them and Millspec Manufacturing? They have changed our perspective on everything. Yeah. I mean, like you, you can go all the way to the beginning of doing the online courses for Warrior Rising and being taught the actual business aspect. Not even just business, but like to take care of your body. Like once we yeah. started, I forget exactly how they worded it, but it was something along the lines of like, if you can't take the take the breaks and make boundaries to come home and take care of yourself and find the time to work out and everything. Your business is not going to succeed because you are mm -hmm. the running force behind it. And we really took that the stride the past year. We've been trying to work out every single night and we've been weightlifting and stuff. So that's one part of, it that's part of the business <laughs> that they taught yeah. and the other courses. Oh yeah. I mean like it, and not only that, uh, Warrior Rising, they, they put it in terms that a veteran would be able to understand mm -hmm. too. It's it like I lost thought. It's okay. It's just, <laughs> like the operations order and everything like yeah, that. The order and everything, yep. and how they actually like. Uh, what's the situation over here? What's the problem? Mm -hmm. How are you gonna go to it? And if there's a object in the way or obstacle, how are you gonna mm -hmm. create a rally point to get around it? It's yeah. it, it was really in depth and understanding for veterans. It was awesome. And they bring in a lot of entrepreneurs yeah. who are not just, let's say, focused on manufacturing area. You're seeing business owners from the entire spread here and you're All getting industries. you're hearing their stories, their problems, um, you know, how they overcame that. And it gives you a really strong perspective on how to overcome all the issues you're gonna face in entrepreneurship. So I mean it is a phenomenal course. I cannot recommend it enough to anybody. Not only that, the network that you oh, create yeah. Being just part of it, you know, like, yeah, we're manufacturing, but there could be somebody in like the technology industry and we can support them, you know, and bring in like manufacturing for them to us. Yeah. You know, it's, it's awesome. Again, synergy. There's so much synergy. So much. There is. <laughs> yeah. And I know exiting the military for myself, it was like either get a CDL, maybe do a trade, go back to school or join corporate America. I chose corporate America because I was like, oh my God, I have no idea what to do. So yeah. it's cool to see how people have become entrepreneurs because that's not typically a route, at least I was in the army, um, something that was presented as an option because it doesn't run in my family. So I didn't even really know. I didn't even pick up my first business book until I was getting out. And I was like, oh, I'm joining corporate. I guess I should learn what the heck cogs are and you know all these other different terms. And I'm like, I have no idea. So, <laughs> so being um, uh, entrepreneurs yourself, what is one or two pieces or what is, if you have a few pieces of advice that you would give an aspiring veteran wanting to be an entrepreneur, maybe they have an idea or service, or maybe they don't know where to start. What would that, those pieces of advice be? Uh, first place to start is uh, definitely Warrior Rising. <laughs> is that perspective and that education, it's free. Take advantage of it. And the family and the network you're going to have is uncomparable. Mm -hmm. For advice in general is buckle up. It's not going to be easy. But again, it's that labor of love. Have some grit prepared. Um, there's going to be moments where you're going to be at your lowest point being like, why did I do this? I'm not providing for my family the right way. You might cry in the, in the closet, you know, <laughs> yeah. just feel at life and bringing everybody down with you. But you guys are not <laughs> alone. I mean, everybody goes yeah. through that. And that's really the make or break point in business ownership. This is where the point where it is the lowest, the hardest time. And people usually back out of entrepreneurship and, and they shut down their business. But if, I promise you, if you can get through that hard time and keep pushing, your big break is coming. You know, it really is. Yeah, there was a uh, one story about that guy who was uh, digging for gold. Oh, yeah. You know, for like, was it, I forget, was it days on end? He did it for like a week, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, he didn't get no gold. And then he's like, you know what, I just give up. And then another guy came in, bought the mine. Uh -huh. And then within three feet of digging, he hit a gold vein. Yeah, and became yeah. multimillionaire. Yeah. Yep. I think that, that story is actually from the book, Thank You for Rich. And yeah. So I would recommend also reading a lot of books like that that are about your mindset and about staying positive and finding the silver linings in the situation because that got us through a lot of this. Yeah. You got you to gotta, you gotta be optimistic in everything. Yeah. Hey, you know what? 
this person didn't give me no work, but you know what? I created a relationship. Yeah. That person knows who I am, mm -hmm. what I do, and they'll talk about me. All right. Word of mouth gets out. There's always a silver lining in business, even when you're starting. You just got to be able to reprogram your brain to find it. Yep. There definitely is. And I would say there's, there's a lot of power in celebrating every single win. Yes, um, no matter how small, because those small things compound over time into what become the big things. So I think that's really powerful. Um, and also kind of backtracking, you're talking about having boundaries. And that's something I talk about a lot as well. And I think are incredibly important for us to honor boundaries and pouring into ourselves because as you probably heard, you cannot pour from an empty cup. So I like that you touched exactly. on that piece where you have to pour into yourself because to be able to collaborate with other people, network, shake hands, or your family, Mm -hmm. um, you have to be present in yourself and make sure that, you know, it's not just all entrepreneurship all the time. So with that being said, what is your <laughs> take on work-life balance? This is such a common question for entrepreneurs. Oh, I mean, it, in the beginning, all right, being a novice at it, like you, you don't create that. You're just like, you know, what, I'm going to work 12, 16 hours a day. I only need eight hours of sleep or we less. Sucked. We sucked at the balance. You know, like the, <laughs> yeah. just be, go, go, go. Got to got to get in as much work as possible. We would even have customers in the beginning that would call us at, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, almost to 11 o'clock at night. And we would take those calls because we were a new business and we wanted to, to bring in as much income as possible. But you get burnt out. You do. Very quickly. Um, and we weren't in the best of health. We weren't eating the best of foods. So now current day, we're almost two years into this. We have a really great work-life balance to the point yep. where every single morning it's, you know, breakfast with our kids. We go on a morning walk together. Um, you know, we have scheduled work times now. We come home, have dinner again, work out again at night. It's it's a night and day difference compared to when we first began. And it's absolutely critical that you give yourself those boundaries because you will fizzle out if you don't find that sweet spot. Especially if you have kids yeah. and you're just working all the time, mm -hmm. never see them. Well, why did you create this business? You know, you know, if if it's for your kids, bring your kids in and spend time with them, you know, mm -hmm. like that, that's who it's for. Yeah, they're not going to remember when they're little that daddy stayed at work until you know, two o'clock in the morning, but they're going to remember that you were there for their baseball game or that you went on those morning walks with them, you know? So work-life balance. I'm yeah. so glad you brought that up. That is incredibly critical. It is. It's a success. Yes. And as a, a mom myself, I completely agree with all of that is that they will, they know everything. They mimic everything. They, they will remember everything yes. and probably bring it up. So you want to make <laughs> most of those good, good memories, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So going back to the business shower experience, was there a single particular impactful moment or thing that happened or a, maybe a few moments that were, were impactful for you? Yeah. Well, <laughs> see me having a TBI, like mm -hmm. getting out of active duty and going into the reserves and trying to get my CMP stuff like going through, um, People telling you no, you're you're fine. Just it's just PTSD. That's all it is. And they brush it off, and then you know, finally finding out I have a TBI, but it felt alone. Like I, I wasn't. I was by myself, and nobody could relate to it. Going to that event, there is there is people that I have met at that event that was so I don't know how to explain it. it it validated your experiences and what you're going through instead of the VA saying there's nothing wrong with you Curtis they said I'm going through the exact same thing I know about the headaches I know about the cluster migraines I know about the vision loss I'm going through it too and it was an instant camaraderie you know yeah like, like that's, that's my brother that's my sister because they know exactly what's going on yeah and it's just like I had never got that in my whole life and just being there and I was able to meet these people and not feel alone. Yeah. And that's why um, I also, you know, describing where you're rising family. We all came to this as strangers, but when we met everybody, it was nothing but hugs and support and love and being able to relate to one another. And gosh, I am so thankful we were even chosen for this cohort because could you imagine if you would have kept going on in your life with that knowing like filling that void in you, mm -hmm. yeah, you know? it, it would be depressing yeah it, it, and then just on the other side of the business from the business shower meeting other companies that understand the startup struggles and talking about their success and then, and then coming up to us and be like this is amazing you guys crushed it um sharing their stories maybe even uh, wanting to collaborate together and yeah stuff. the mm -hmm. collaboration 
people wanting to collaborate their businesses with our businesses and yeah. possibly partnering up yeah. and oh, yeah. supporting. Oh, man, it's amazing. That's awesome. Let me uh, mention real fast, uh, REE Medical, that was actually a sponsor mm -hmm. of the event. Um, they came up to us. Amazing. So Curtis just shared how mm -hmm. he struggled with the VA for five years to say that I have a TBI. And they kept saying, no, it's just PTSD. REE Medical actually you know, helps veterans start their seeing they're filing their disability claims and they get all the medical information. If we would have had that years ago, your life would have been changed. But when we talked to them about our business, they were there during the pitch. They heard about our workshops. We're talking about collaborating with them in the future for our workshop where it's specifically with the soldiers to machinists, with the skill bridge coming in. Yeah. We can work with them to start to get these veteran or these active duty soldiers, get their CP exams lined up, get all the disability claims and the medical evidence. So there's, again, synergy. There's a lot of collaboration coming in here that we can benefit each other. And that's the benefit of going to Warrior Rising Business Showers is you're meeting people that you probably don't think that you have anything in common, but manufacturing medical industry yeah. coming together for a great cause. Yeah. Nothing compares. That's, oh, it's just incredible, it, isn't it? It's, a, it's insane. Yeah. Let's say, because that, that disability part is so, it's made so difficult. Some people have like really great experiences. It's very inconsistent, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, some have an easy experience, some don't. So I think it's really awesome to have met those people, but also that, you know, it's a mutual benefit, right? Like everyone's getting eyes on, but we're helping um, each other, diving into those different audiences, make sure that is spread. And um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about like mental toughness too. Um, you know, a lot of veterans, like we have, we are put into these situations that, mm -hmm you had no choice other than to be mentally tough. I know you use the word grit a lot too. Um, not that we don't have, you know, mental health issues because a lot of us also face that. Just maybe it looks a little bit different because I think once we get to civilian side, it just looks a lot different. There's stressors in the civilian side that might not be as like, well, I've done a lot crazier before or something like that. So kind of discuss some um, like when like with risk taking in business right there's got to be some of that mental toughness piece or how that's translated do you think your service has helped in uh, overcome challenges in taking risks in a different light do you think it would have been different had you not served it would have definitely been different like if i didn't serve i wouldn't have had my cluster migraines i wouldn't have had mm -hmm. all my issues and i wouldn't have pursued like pursued cnc machining like i did you know, because of the benefit health wise it gave me. You know, mm -hmm. like yeah, it, it it probably wouldn't have came to fruition. Yeah, and then I think your service too just made us a lot more resilient to you know, the ups and downs of business too. Like we can get through this, you you know, we we can do it. Well not only that, in the military you think very logical. Mm -hmm. All right. You you're like, Well, if this is the problem <laughs> get rid of the fuck problem all right Easy. Well, it's like if if this is an issue and you can just you know push it off to the side and you know continue mission then do that yeah you know like you, you don't have to deal with it so yeah like ha having that mindset from the military definitely benefited in a logical sense of decision -making. yeah so i think your military service definitely impacted and played a huge role yeah. in some mill spec manufacturing yeah Awesome. I love to hear that. And I know this is not the last time we'll be hearing from the two of you. I look forward to catching up and seeing what else you're going to do. But as a last question to close out, what are your hopes and aspirations for the future of Millspec manufacturing? Take that one. Oh, that's, a, it's a, that's a big one. We're going, we're, going to, <laughs> we're going to the moon. We're in our rocket. We're, we're awesome. strapped in. It's not just about growing Millspec manufacturing and making the most amazing parts. Mm -hmm. It's Bringing everybody up, you know, our motto has always been give people a hand up in life. And coincidentally, that was Warrior Risings too. Mm -hmm. So that was close to our heart. But for uh, Millspec Manufacturing specifically, you know, we want to get into defense work. We want to get into aerospace. We want to get more into medical. We want to touch base on all of it. Yeah. And um, being able to get into those sectors and then bring other veterans in to help with that. I, mean, I think it's going to be incredible. Do you remember years ago when you worked in another shop, they had like gun parts come in and you were working on these gun parts and it was actually a gun that he had served and used every single day of his life. It was a 240 wow. Bravo. Yeah. Okay. Making an actual like lower receiver out of aluminum. Yeah. And so, <laughs> um, you know, they made these parts and civilian machinists were looking yeah. at them like, what are these? How do they work and everything? And he comes over, he's like, yada, yada, yada. This is yeah. This <laughs> you know, literally doing like, the sleep. They were, yeah. they were from the barrel, they were making everything and it's like, 
you got to do all this and this. And then do you have the headspace and timing? And they're like, what? Right, it's like, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? You literally can make this 240 Bravo here in your shop. Yeah. And you don't realize that? Oh, dude, you got to tell us how this goes. We can make these parts better than. Yeah. And that kind of kickstarted the momentum of we need to get veterans into this because especially if you mm -hmm. go into, the, you know, the aerospace and DOD sector of this. Having people with hands-on experience of this equipment, that is nothing but beneficial to the manufacturing industry because you're going to have quality. You're going to have consistency. You're going to know exactly how it's supposed to fit, form, and function, you know? They're, they're going to have that experience of how it's supposed to work, Yeah, you know, and like also have ideas, hey, this could actually be a lot better, Yeah, you know? So maybe spit on and bring even better ideas to it. Yeah, to the engineers of the yeah. who are making these parts. Yeah, so Millspec has some big plans and it's going to not just benefit us, it's going to benefit everybody. Yeah. I love to hear that. I mean, you guys have definitely made your mark and there is going to be a lasting legacy for you. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that now. I am a fortune teller, but not really. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you guys are, you are doing incredible. You should be very proud of yourself. Congratulations again for winning the shower, winning the day. It was awesome. I can't wait to connect again to hear what you both are up to and what you're doing and collaborating there is so much excitement going. So can you just let everyone know where they can find you, whether it's to future collab or anything like that, let us know where you, they can connect with you. Sure. We have a couple socials. We are both on LinkedIn. So if you want to get on LinkedIn, you look up Curtis Wolfinger or Rebecca Wolfinger. And then we are also on Instagram and it's just all one word, Millspec Manufacturing. And then let's see the last one. Or we have to say our website. It's going to be www.mill. Make sure you put dash spec dash manufacturing.com and you can connect with us on any of those platforms. And we look forward to hearing from everybody. You want to give our email too? Yeah. If you want to send us an email, it's contact at mill. -dash. Excellent. Well, I appreciate both your time for anyone listening. If this has inspired you, I encourage you to reach out, check out warrior Academy on www.warriorrising.org. So O R G. If you have any other questions, reach out on any platform. We are Warrior Rising. We are here to help. A teammate will reach out. It is life-changing. It is synergistic. It is family. It is freaking every word you can think of. So if you have any questions, please check us out and be sure to stay tuned for other segments where we talk to the many voices of Warrior Rising. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone.